Discovering your photography style for some evolves pretty naturally. You know, from the first moment you pick up a camera, you know exactly what you want to point your lens at. But for most of us, myself included, it's kind of an ongoing challenge that we have to face with every, uh, with every new season. In this video, I'd like to pose a thought, uh, an observation really, that our photography style is equal parts nature and nurture, that we're born with a certain propensity towards certain things, and then the environment in which we live, the lifestyle that we're faced with, those things help us develop the style that we actually pursue. So we're out on the Polecat Trail Loop. This is one right outside of the city. Uh, it's one that is usually pretty popular, but it being a very cold morning, ground is frozen, um, not a lot of people out today, which I like. It's very quiet, very peaceful. Now we are getting, uh, we do have a lot of cloud cover, so um, maybe not a lot of photography today, based on the lighting anyway. Uh, but we shall see. I haven't even pulled out my camera yet. There is a nice view of uh, the hillsides, you know, like the Bogus Basin area up north of here. Nice cloud cover, kind of low-lying clouds over there. But uh, all I have with me, or the longest focal length I have with me, is an 85 millimeter, and it just yeah, it wouldn't really frame right. And uh, so, as nice as it is to look at, no photography there so far. So I had this piano teacher in high school who uh, was a gifted musician and, and really dug deeper into the art of music and uh, I loved working with him. He would often describe something he called a life composition and that was a piece of music that from the time you first got bit by the music bug you would continue adding to, continue composing with and as your life changed and as things happened those, that composition would kind of change with it. So if you played it from beginning to end, it would, it would tell your entire life story and it would capture all the emotions you were feeling throughout the time. And in his belief, that life composition really couldn't be completed, really couldn't be finished until your life was. And I bet if you were to look back at the photos you've taken throughout the years, it would tell a similar story. You would not only just see like the development of your skills, your technical skills, you know, composition, lighting, those types of things. You would also see an evolution of interests, of subjects. You know, as, as different seasons pass by, you would tell different stories and you would point your camera at different things. And if you were to lay all these photos out in chronological order, you would get this really good story of the life that you've lived thus far. Finding your photography style is an ongoing process. Uh, and that's coming from someone who is basically still trying to discover his. But instead of feeling like I don't know, discouraged by the lack of one. I want to encourage you that your photography style, you know, just like your technical skills in photography, is best developed over time through life experiences, through different challenges, as you go to more places and see more things. Lately, I've really been drawn to photos that embody simplicity, isolation, uh, minimalism, especially uh, with strong contrast of light and shadow. And why is that? I'm not a lonely person. There's not a moment in my day that is not interrupted by a toddler begging me to play with her toys or coworkers having conversations about the latest episode of a TV series I've never even heard of. It dawned on me when I was preparing for this video uh, that the reason I'm being pulled to these types of scenes is exactly because I am not a lonely person. My mind and my body are constantly being scattered in so many different directions that scenes that embody peace, focus, tranquility, and especially order, are really helping me make sense of the craziness in my life. So my art, my, my expression, the thing that I'm currently trying to communicate with my photographs is something that I think subconsciously I'm desiring. My life at the moment, you know, how I live and, and what I'm experiencing in my environment is nurturing me towards a specific style of photography and, and a specific interest in subject. As my lifestyle has evolved, so has my art. I actually find it pretty fascinating, maybe a little discouraging, at how many photographers are out there who don't really impart anything of themselves into their image. You know, they see a scene that catches their attention, they snap a picture, and 
because they understand like the technical side of photography. They're able to expose it properly, compose it well, you know, they take the image home, edit it, do whatever they want with it, and then post on social media, get some nice attention, and then move on to the next image that captivates them and, and, and tries to say a compelling thing to an audience. But ultimately, most of those photographers are primarily interested in, you know, like social media credit. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, it's vital, imperative, that you ask yourself some very important questions about your life, your situation, your environment. Otherwise, you know, you might be a really good technical photographer, you know, you know how to, you know how to take a picture really good, but you don't ask those questions and your photographs will always be lacking something. Because a photograph without the human emotion, it's just a memory. I have a pretty long background with music, longer than photography. And music, you know, being the language of the soul in my opinion, and uh, my personal form of expressing so many emotions, has always affected the way I approach photography and all other art styles, really. My musical compositions were always based off of you know, what I was experiencing at, a, at the time in my personal life. I was creating a life composition like my teacher used to say. But unlike my teacher, I was taking little snapshots of what I was experiencing at the time and what I was uh, seeing at the time and using those as influences to create more compelling music and, and deeper stories. And as I said, this is how I approach photography as well. So, you know, I'm not so much so interested in just photographing a captivating scene that I, that'll get me attention on Instagram. I'm more interested in using photography as a way to communicate what's happening in my personal life or what I'm feeling in my personal life. And as you know, life is always changing. So we're all born with a, some kind of propensity towards something, with a personality. And that honestly is the strongest determination of the types of subjects you're gonna be drawn to in your art. Now, for instance, I've always been passionate about the outdoors. Uh, I love nature, animals, the beautiful landscapes that I see. Uh, I tend to be more introverted, more introspective, tend to avoid crowds, and I've noticed recently especially that I'm pretty awkward in, uh, in conversations especially with strangers. And all of that has led me to have a natural affinity towards landscape photography, nature photography, and a particular style of street photography that is, you know, quiet observer from a distance and less in the business of strangers. Now all of that is the type of subject that I pursue, but the art that I'm expressing using that subject, using my camera, is totally dependent on where I am currently in my personal journey of life. As much as I love a photograph that captures like a cool scene or some interesting light or some dramatic atmosphere, the photographs that last the test of time, the ones we keep coming back to and we remember, are the ones that capture more than just the scene. They're the ones that the photographer, the artist uses to communicate a little something deeper about themselves and their lives or in the lives of their subject to the viewer. And in that moment, when it transcends beyond just a cool scene, that's when no one really cares about what camera you use, if it's film or digital, or you know, what lens and focal length or editing technique you used. It goes beyond all of that and it becomes what it really is meant to be. I hope that this video has helped relieve some of the pressures you might be feeling uh, to identify your photography style, if it's something you're specifically struggling with. Allow your life experiences to shape and evolve your artistic style as much and as often as they need to. This, this process is an ongoing one. It's gonna probably keep going and continue for as long as you continue growing as a photographer. So don't lose sight of the purpose. It's not to identify yourself immediately, it's to express who you are at the time. So keep it up.
never stop snapping. You're doing great.